Good morning, everyone. It's Gail from O'Keefe Agencies. Top of the morning to you. Of course, it's March 17th, Patty's Day, and I thought this would be a great day to talk about discolorations in the nail. I think I'm gonna lose the head. So, the topic I wanted to speak to you a little bit today is talking about mold and fungus with fingernails and toenails. Always a concern for us, whether we're a manicurist, pedicurist, or nail technician. These are things that we should be able to recognize, know how to treat, and make sure that our client goes home and is quite able to do the same as well. So I'll talk a little bit about uh, the fungus first, the big F word. So it's always been a concern in our industry to have the highest standards of hygiene. And a fungal infection with a nail is something that is very easily passed on if our tools are not cleaned properly, certainly. But how does a client actually get a fungal infection underneath their fingernail or toenail? So on both our hands and feet, our nails are pretty much constructed the same way. We have three different areas of cuticle. And without being too technical, we have a cuticle area back here that's called the epinicium. We have one that runs down each side called the perinicium. And then we have one up underneath called the hyponicium. So in actuality, we have like a little rubber band that runs right around our nail. And this actually keeps out the dirt and germs and bacteria. So if we puncture that in any way, maybe rooting around in our purse or taking a thumbtack off of the wall, or heaven forbid our nail technician digs deep underneath and opens up the skin in, in some way. Now we have an open avenue for the dirt and germs and bacteria, and we now are at risk of fungus certainly, and of mold infection as well. So going back to the fungus, there's five characteristics for recognizing a fungal infection in the nail. And the first one is a separation. The technical name is called anicholysis, but for most of us, we don't talk in too many technical terms. So the onycholysis or the separation is something, well, you know, it has to be open in order for anything to get underneath the nail. And what happens then, once the nail is opened up, we are susceptible to parasites that actually get underneath the nail. They go in there and they eat the top layer of the subcutaneous tissue that is in our nail bed. And of course, they're living in there, partying there, having babies in there, and they're also excreting in there. So the characteristics of a fungal infected nail would be first separation and then discoloration. So once the nail lifts, it's no longer healthy looking and pink. It's kind of an off-white, yellowish discoloration. And of course, it's not going away. So if it's left and left, it goes into some crazy colors, very, uh, very dark. It could go into stages of brown and black. And uh, so basically, when we have the nail that is lifted with time, it becomes very thick and brittle. So that would be your third characteristic of recognizing that. And then of course, there's a debris underneath there. And then when we clean out that debris, it has an extremely foul odor. And that is the feces of the parasites that live underneath the nail. So I believe as nail technicians, it's very important for us to be able to recognize when we're working on that, that is something that is contagious and something that needs to be treated. Um, the other condition that I said I wanted to mention today was mold. And mold, given that it's Patty's Day, I thought it was a good time to talk about it, is always green underneath the nail. And the characteristics or the environment, I should say, that we need for mold to grow is moisture, air, heat, and darkness. And of course, our nail beds, whether it's our fingernails or toenails, are a perfect place for mold to grow. Again, we have to have, you know, that cuticle area open up for something to get up through the nail, to get in underneath the nail. And uh, with the mold, we have moisture, of course, because we're washing our hands all day long. And then in moisture, we have the air, or the oxygen. Our nail beds are quite warm. And of course, when something has someone has something funky going on with a nail, oftentimes they are going to put something over it, like a polish, just to cover it. Or if this condition happens with someone that's already already wearing an artificial nail, uh, well, then you're not seeing these things happening. So it is important for us as our nail technicians to make sure that you know we recognize, we understand how to recognize the characteristics of a mold and a fungus and certainly be able to advise our clients in how to look at that. So 
we have a couple of products in our LC line that are, I feel, LC in line that are detrimental to having our nail station. So the first one I'm just going to tell you a little bit about is called Onicept. Onicept comes in a dropper bottle. This would be one that would actually sit on your nail station for manicures, artificial nails, what have you. Um, it also comes in a small retail size that we can retail to our clients as well. So with a dropper bottle, of course, we never touch the nail, but if you had an issue going on underneath a fingernail, at the end of the service, um, after we've educated the client as to what's going on and why it's so important, you know, that she's going to need that take-home size with her, we're going to use our large dropper bottle and just turn her finger upside down and kind of drop, come close with the dropper and drop that in. The Onicept has something called triclosan, and triclosan is an antibacterial, antifungal agent. It's it's going to go underneath the nail, it's going to dry up any moisture that we have in the nail, and it's going to kill off any uh, yeast cells or bacteria that's underneath the nail. So it's an awesome way to treat that, and I've actually seen this work amazingly well on so many different levels. So of course that would be our LC and Onicept. Um, this would be kind of our hand version. We also have a foot version for people who have toenail fungus. And of course, you know, that is fairly common these days. Um, and we have a couple of different ways that they can buy this product. The product itself is called Mycocept. And of course, um, if we have a fungal infected nail, we say we have a, a mycotic nail. So hence, Mycocept, easy to remember. It comes in a dropper bottle same way that we can drop that underneath the nail and treat it that way but it also comes in a little spray as well so if you have someone who has an issue even between their nails where the skin is thickened and broken and then they're at risk of athlete's foot they can spray this in through um, with the spray bottle but if it's a more localized area that you're working on definitely they can go with the micocept so again the micocept has the same ingredient as the onicept it's the triclosan, and of course, it's antibacterial and antifungal as well. We also have another little product called a Mycocept Plus. So it looks like a, a super hardener. I didn't bring that one with me, but it's like a little bottle of super hardener. And that's one that actually has um, antipyrox in there. It's a patented ingredient from LCN. And you can paint this onto the nail like a super hardener, like a, almost like a super hardener from polish. And this one here will protect the nail from um, you know everything that's underneath it basically uh, that's in the nail bed so it will help give that nail that extra added protection so these are just two little things that i i did want to mention you today because i feel it's really important um you know given that we work in an industry where there is just so many things that are contagious and of course having a mold or a fungal infection these things are not going to go away on their own um, we must educate the client about them and uh, be able to work you know with them um, to get through this condition when we talk about the mold one thing that i didn't mention that i would like to mention mold can be found in two places um, when we talk about nails so first it can be underneath a lifted natural nail through trauma you know so either maybe you know squatting the door in their finger god forbid or what have you where there's some damage to the nail and the nail is lifted so in a case like that, we would actually, um, you know, go in with our Onicept or our Microcept, whether it be hands or, or foot, and uh, we would just drop it underneath and keep treating it until the nail grows out and reattaches itself. The other place that we can find mold on our fingernails often um, is sitting on top of a natural nail underneath a lifted artificial product. So what we do in a case like that is we remove everything on top. We will file directly on the mold and remove the bulk of the green that is in there. And then we're going to put a whole new overlay of product on there. And what we're doing basically, if there is any remnants of the mold left behind, we're gonna be smothering that so it can't grow again. Because as we said earlier, we need the moisture, the air, the heat and the darkness. So if we take some of those components away, um, you know, it won't reinstate itself. So this is something as well that we need to know as nail technicians, very important. So um, please contact me if you have any other questions here at O'Keefe's. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, you know, we look forward to speaking with you every couple of weeks. So signing off for now, and I'll talk to you very soon. Bye now.